Yes, yes, we're live. Hello. Uh, I am Jordi Massacre and welcome to the Cheeky Livestream number 80, a place where we just chat shit, mate, about this, that and a third. Shouldn't have sworn in the first 10 seconds. That's clearly going to have a massive effect on this video's ranking due to the algorithm not shining favorably upon sweary people. But that's all right. That's all right. We power through. We've just done a three hour show or <laughs> we've, we've done an hour show. And talking about news and stuff. And now we're just going to have a casual chat, a cheeky live stream. It is at 8 p.m. in uh, L.A., about 11, uh, 8.40 p.m. in L.A., 8, uh, 11.40 p.m. in New York, and 4 in the morning in London. London late night massive. Are you out there? The purpose of this cheeky live stream is to just be excellent to one another, like Bill and Ted said. That's about it. That is about it. So I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but um, yeah, mate, Gary Sanders donated a thousand dollars again today. Do you remember last month? He, he said he donated a thousand dollars for this month because I wasn't going to do a 24 hour live stream. And then he just did it again. That guy, that guy, that guy is a, is a, is a madness. He's doing an absolute madness, bruv. I just can't believe it. So yeah, man in the comments so this is all about you can you take off some of the heat i want you to say like the weirdest shit possible and ask me the best questions possible death claudetto says are we here yet you certainly are is this going to turn into a 24-hour stream shannon, that would be weird right <laughs> an impromptu 24-hour live stream shannon spears says good day from riverland south australia Ema says boom 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 <laughs> say where you where you are we, we're we gonna drop that tune okay okay dj emo fucking selector he does have dj in his name he does have dj in his name okay let's it boom 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 are we gonna are we gonna go fucking retro 90s what's that song called i said boom 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 and let me hear say hey <laughs> That's a fucking uh, 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 baby, you're so fine. I'm gonna make you mine. If I cannot be with you, maybe I can have a taste. Let me do it uh, 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 in my face. Boom, boom, boom. Now let me hear say, hey, oh, hey, oh. That's some 90s shit. 90s shit was just everyone's so horny. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And we were all like fucking in the 90s. Then say, way oh, way oh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. You got me a hype with that song name. What's that song called? I said boom 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 what is it called i could just look it up boom 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 now let me hear you say boom 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 by the out <laughs> mate these guys mate boom 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 out here brothers i can't find it mate this isn't on spotify you've got to be kidding me it's got to be right boom 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 yeah no results okay so wow the out here brothers have obviously passed away we go on to the youtubes Right. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. I make it last forever. Whoa, are these fucking 90 songs with the word boom. Boom, boom, boom by Venga. Oh my God. Mate, Venga Boys took over the boom, boom, boom uh, ranking. Okay, so th th this, is, this is the fucking, this is the madness we're about to do. Um, get these really annoying ads. Stop. Fuck off. Here we go. And let me hear say, hey, yo. <laughs> this tune. Did this was this an American thing? Mate, the nineties was just like fuck. Okay, now look, this is what this is normal masculine behavior. Like chilling on the corner, got some babes, and you're gonna look at their ass. Jim, don't. How dare you not like the song, Jim? You're not allowed to not like it. Look, these guys are thinking. Oh shit, look at that ass. This was a good time, man. This was a good time. Do American people know this song? That's my question. That's my question. Well, this is actually kind of terrible. Wait, hang on a minute. Wait, wait, wait. What the hell was that? Like the guy was taking a shit. He was taking a shit and then someone threw him some toilet paper and he winked at the car. Like, what? Wait, what the hell was that? He's taking a shit. Oh, there's no toilet paper. And his brother's got him. He's like, he's like I'm gonna, but I don't know what that's all about. What's this wink all about? 
That's a, that's an odd part. That's an odd part. And look, look at the subliminal messaging. Pass the toilet paper on the wall. What's this? What, what's the message of the toilet paper in this song? Can anyone know? PH Joyce has never seen this weird this video. Weird as fuck. Okay, Deathcore Jedi says he does know it. Okay, PH Joyce says I remember the bomb. Yeah, the bomb was wicked. Oh shit, Jamaican music, mate. Here we go. Influence. Well, uh, there's a cartoon in this. There's some weird animated stuff. His wingman says Shannon Spear. This looks like dorm life. Look, even the referee, like she wants a shag. Look, it's just a horny tune. Yeah, so it's men flexing on on, on the on the basketball basketball co- court. So fun. See that you wouldn't see today, like cause like. As the destruction of the West continues unabated uh, at an exponential snowballing pace, men now are not allowed to, to, to chat up a girl. Like, this is this is definitely would be offensive by today's standards. Look at Wait, wait. Anyways, he, tra- he tried to chat up a girl. Yeah, look, look. <gasps> How dare you talk to her? How dare you talk to her? That's a microaggression, everybody. See, look, look, people that... Isn't it funny? Everyone's like having fun, having a laugh, man. It, it, wasn't it fun when life was fun? And we didn't get, like, fucking put in jail for hitting on girls? <laughs> Mate, put your booty on my face. Lad of mercy. This guy is... Those lyrics. Let me take you from behind. I won't come until it's time. If I cannot sleep with you, maybe I can have a taste. Obviously, that's a bit of the old cunnilingus, brav. Put your what on my tongue? Wait. Put your nani on my tongue and your booty on my face. <laughs> that I'm married, mate. This song is this song goes hard as a motherfucker. Wait, what's the other song which is like okay wait so 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 the main hook the weird i don't know what that instrument is it sounds like a sample that kind of like uh, 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 uh. there's another song like that in the 90s that used that they all like copied each other real to real i like to move it see this is probably this this goes even harder than that one possibly possibly this is some madness bro right, japanese ads I right, check this out. This is repetitive, but it's such a hype track. I like to move it, move it. Yeah. I like to move it, move it. USA. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. I like to move it, move it. Uh 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 uh. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. I like to move it, move it. Like that beat, that shuffle, but like the little percussion before, like you know, before the one. That's what really makes it is the shuffle. See, this was when you didn't just have to shake your ass like some kind of uh, demented um, bird on a leaf trying to trying to attract the opposite sex in a twerk to to kind of to get the male attention. Like there was a little more to it. There's see, there's a little more to it. Actually, that's that's not a good dance, but the way that women shook their asses back then was sexier. I thought. Like look at that. That like that's I don't know what that is. It's not a twerk, but it's it's like it. That's the point. That's that's the apex of of like booty shaking. And then like when it evolved into twerking, I think it went too far. This guy. This was a smash though. Well, it's kind of a twerk, but it's not the same. Wait, 
Anyways, like this one didn't get me as hype, but but the other one did. I like I like to move it, move it. Uh, is is this one? So okay, so yeah, I got really excited about the last song, and that that one brought me down to earth a bit. That one wasn't quite as good. That's that one's a little bit more throwaway. Um, so what are we gonna talk about? What are we gonna talk about? Deathclaw Jedi says offensive mayor. I still hit on women at age fifty and don't fucking care about the political consequences. Well said. PH Joyce says, oh my God, we're living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Griffin Devitt, the first song says, he'd never heard of it in the USA, but he likes it. Oh yeah, haha, Johnny got all worked up by Nancy Pelosi's boobies. Yeah, so Nancy Pelosi, I kind of like her a little bit better now, just because of her boobies. There's another song, what's the song that goes, bom, 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 bom. Bom, 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 bom. Da, 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 da. I know that Ema knows what that is. Death Call Jedi says, now nah, that in a twerk, that was a booty shake. I, I like the booty shake. I like it more. So I've done no preparation for this at all. I think I've probably dropped a few little links um, in my notes about kind of random stuff. I usually make a few little notes for live streams and stuff. Um, so let's see if I can find it. I know, I know I've been doing some music production recently, so it's probably music production related. Uh, okay. Nah, that's kind of boring. Fuck that. We're just, we're just going to have to wing it. So it's uh, 1251 in, in Tokyo, Japan. Weird, weird. It feels way earlier. As I said, I'm waking up later and later. So, I don't, I'm, I'm in this kind of weird mood at the moment. I'm really keen to focus hard on music production, but the Johnny Massacre show just takes so long. I've started editing it up into individual clips and they all have individual thumbnails. And I also edit it out and make a YouTube short, which is a 60 second video max, which seems to be looked upon more favorably by the algorithm. So it just takes so damn long, but I want to do some music production stuff. And I'm kind of, I'm getting a bit thirsty to go outside and do some stuff. I don't know, I want to do something naughty. I want to do something naughty. And um, I have the best of intentions. I think I want to go out. I want to do this, that and third. And then I kind of put the feelers out and various people say, let's go out. And then I realized, no, but then there's too many people who want to go out and party. So I need to be more selective. But one thing I really want to do is I want to go to the sketchy underground area, Kabuki Cho, and I want to go to the weird underground bars there for a few drinks with some lads and then go out for a night on the tiles. But I don't know how much I want to get smashed up. I don't like drinking too much on a regular basis, but I do feel like doing something naughty. I feel like doing something quite naughty. Saturday, there's a little event. I'll go to that and see what happens. I could go out after that. I quite want to collaborate. I was thinking of getting in touch with the old, or I should say the young Macharim. See what she's saying. I'll make that naughty girl just sent me a message. <laughs> oh God. Okay, do you remember that on the 24 hour live stream I told you about that girl who's like the super freak? Okay, I'm gonna respond. Hey babe, don't hate me for ghosting. I'll give her a ghost. I'll give her a ghost, uh, a ghost emoji. All right. Okay. Oh, she, she read the message straight away. Okay. So I just, I have to keep something on the boil. The thing is like, these girls who are just who are shagging shagging around it's not it's not very attractive right you think how many guys have been up in that I don't, I don't, nah bruv nah bruv um why don't i just use my phone on the johnny mask show or not or not i'm downloading i'm downloading a massive bunch of samples um emo you you you'll you'll love this so loads of cool sounds on those songs we heard probably it's, it's in this collection uh, and various songs classic electronic music songs they come from these old school sample cds and shit and this this mad lad online he he collated pretty much every single electronic music sample cd known to man including the ones that came with samplers hardware samplers and it's 130 gigabytes no, it's 330 gigabytes or over 300. <laughs> God, MC. <It's> a, <laughs> I 
I shouldn't react to that. I shouldn't, but it is quite funny though. Yeah, okay. So, so God MC says, Daily Reminder Epstein didn't kill himself with five fire emojis. <laughs> not three, not four, but five. Um, so someone's collated 300 gigabytes of, um, of samples and I'm downloading it. I've downloaded 20%. So, so I'm going to have every single sample CD ever from the 90s, which I'm actually quite hyped about. I'm actually quite hyped about. And um, Griffin never says, Johnny, have you heard Crazy Bitch? Excuse me? What's your language, sir? Crazy Bitch by Buck Cherry. Let's play it. That sounds well dodgy. All right, let me search that. So I'm downloading this huge sample CD thing, which I'm quite excited about. And um, I started looking online for kind of samples and I came across this collective. It's really interesting. So there's a collective of people that doesn't exist on my Spotify, mate. And I found it. Yeah, Buck Cherry doesn't have a space. Grammar police coming for you, Griffin Dever. Uh, I found a website and these people claim that when a producer samples a record for his production and he can't clear the sample, this collective will replay the sample for them, regardless of what it is, whether it's drums, whether it's like, uh, you know, whatever, violin or guitar or synthesizer, or even if it's a, if it's a sample of, of various instruments playing at the same time. And apparently they claim to have done this for loads of Grammy award winning tracks. So I found this quite interesting and I, I refuse to believe that they can play it completely accurately, but obviously they've got something going on there. It's called creatingthesound.com. So I thought that was really interesting. So if you're, this is obviously for people who are signed to major label, labels or who have a serious kind of backing or who have a serious foothold in the music industry, you can pay these people to recreate uh, a classic sound if you can't clear the sample. So yeah, this is, this is kind of interesting. Creatingthesound.com meet your instructors we teach you what we've been doing for a long time creating the sound is cooper anderson and dylan wissing we've been creating recording and mixing music at a top level for decades for artists such as alicia keys john legend drake fun who the fuck is that kanye west jay-z eminem future wu-tang clan and many more our drum loops and samples are hired in releases from native instruments and semantics. We've been featured in the New York Times and Modern Drummer magazine. I can't tell if this is bullshit or not. It's, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's pretty, pretty well put together. Produ it's Cooper Anderson. Seems legit though. Producer, mix engineer, and musician. Cooper Anderson's work appears with artists like Kanye West, John Legend, blah, blah, blah. So this guy's been doing it since day dot, apparently. <laughs> People talking some madness in the comments. Then we've got Dylan Wissing, who's some mad drummer. And he played the drumming on Lisa Keys and Kanye West and Eminem and stuff like that. So apparently these dudes will, will play stuff that you can't clear the sample for. So I, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And yeah, sampling is kind of mad though, because I was listening to Spotify recently and honest to God, I listened to this uh, tech, uh, tech House playlist and it features huge Tech House tracks. It has hundreds of thousands of listeners and they are wholesale to sampling Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, the whole fucking song. And I looked that shit up online and there's doesn't seem to be a sample clearance, at least not that I could find. So have you noticed that in dance music, especially house and techno, they're just sampling everything, 50 Cent, Dr. Dre, all these classic tunes. How are they doing that? So God MC says, how do they help you clear the sample? Apparently they'll replay it for you. They'll replay it. So they, they talk about their skills here with creating the sound of the funky drummer. So that's one of the most classic drum loops. And they, they talk about how to kind of recreate sounds and stuff like that using the same microphones and all that shit. But then they sell it. It's a recording and mixing class. So maybe, maybe this is actually bullshit. I'm starting to learn. Um, maybe it's just them trying to sell you, I don't know, some fucking little phony video or something. And, uh, you know, but anyways, I just, I just think it's an interesting thing to talk about. You find a really good sample and you can't use it. So can you replay it? 
but you can never quite get the magic back because especially with the old drum kits they were recorded on uh really expensive microphones um uh the microphone there's one that they use there's, well there's a couple they use which are so goddamn expensive you simply couldn't buy it and the mic the specific mics they used and the the spe- you know kits and the rooms they used and the techniques kind of all those things combined made these amazing drum sounds that everybody sampled and then yeah you you simply can't do that just sitting in your studio at home uh recreating them so there are people out there who are, are pretty good at that i'm always trying to recreate sounds for my heroes and it's impossible man it's a, you're never going to recreate it a hundred percent if it's a very kind of weird esoteric sound ps says what does it mean clear the sample so that means if you sample someone else's music, you have to pay them royalties to use it, but you have to have an agreement in place first. That's, so you say, I want to use your a snippet, a segment, a sample of your song in my song, and can I do it if I pay you? And then you negotiate if they're up for it. And then if you pay them a certain amount of royalties, then you can use it. Um, yeah, like so much of electronic music was based on samples, right? Like all the drums came from classic old soul songs, especially for drum and bass and hardcore and all that kind of stuff and jungle. And uh, yeah, there, there are a few cases where the samples couldn't be cleared on absolutely legendary songs. So there was a garage song called, it was a remix of Boy Is Mine by Brandy. Uh, was it Brandy and Monica? And it was on a UK garage song and they couldn't clear the sample for it for whatever reason. And it was released on a bootleg, but it sold enough copies to get to number one in the United Kingdom, even though it was illegal. So it never actually got into the charts. So I guess where there's a will, there's a way. Um, This is going to get really weird, but there's a sound I've been trying to recreate my whole goddamn life. And I just cannot understand how it was made. This is my favorite sound ever used in dance music. And there's people online who said, this is how you make the sound. Not even close, not even close. So this this song is um this song is like one of the biggest drum and bass songs ever it's the it's like one of the, it's it's such an iconic uh, drum and bass song and it's just if you're going if aliens came down from space and wanted to um wanted to know what drum and bass was, you you probably play them this track in a bunch of like 10 or 20. And uh, the synth in question was used on this song called uh, Fluid. It was used on a song called Nasty Ways. It was used on a song called Go Dillinger. It was used on a song called Tudor Rose. And there seems to be like two variations of it. This is the first, this is the first time I think it was, it was played. So if you listen carefully. Damn. That I do not know what that is, and like do, people gaslight me about this, but no other synth sounds like that. Let me play it again. Um, and then there's a part of the song here. It's going wow, wow, wow. They're using a filter, but there's a part of the song where it goes yeah, yeah. It kind of stretches out. Um, that's what she said. So I, I just, that is the coolest sound I've ever heard. And I know it's a synth. It's probably a fucking sawtooth wave. And I know the producer, he would he would make it and he'd distort it through a desk. Now I bought the desk that he had. And I shouldn't really say this, but that desk is the key to this kind of sound he had with all the drums. It has a certain distortion that's in no other desk. That desk is currently in repair. So I haven't tried to put a synth through it, but I'm sure that's what he was. He was putting it through this desk. And I, he, he's he's... I've seen him make music uh, on YouTube and he, he'll he distort and overdrive it through a desk. So he's obviously overdriving a synth, but I don't know what kind of synth it is. I know what sample he had. He had an emu sampler. And if you listen to it, it's a four-man filter. So it's, it's, a, it's a filter that kind of sounds like a, it imitates vocal cords. That's why it goes wow, wow. It has the wow and the yat, yat sound. So that I believe is a filter on the emu sampler. It's called a, um, it's two filters. It's called Z plane. So one morphs into the other one. And the way that they morph, you can't simply get two filters and blend it A to B. It's, it's a certain, 
thing in the proprietary chipset that enabled these filters to morph. So it's two valve filters, and I'm sure there's there's a preset on those EMU samplers called like a AE, and it goes ay ay or ya ya. So I think he used that, but I can kind of recreate the format filter a bit. But it's I don't know what he's done. I don't. I cannot understand what he's done. And then the other song he did where it's 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 quite prominent. The second one I believe is called uh, Nasty Ways. So let me play this song. I'm, I really want to work out how to make this sound so goddamn badly. So damn badly. I tell you, iTunes is the worst. I can't stand iTunes. I just can't use it. I can't use it. Okay. So this is uh, this is you can hear the you can hear the sound I, I want to recreate here on its own. So it's this. It's the coolest sound I've ever heard. So I think the first song he, he, he ever used it on was a song called Bambata and he used just a little bit and it goes like this. I don't go to the first drop. It's just one pulse. When the song drops, it goes. Eah! So and what? I just think it's the coolest sound, and it's it's such a weird sound because it's so harsh, but it's also not harsh. It, it also had a has a weird softness to it. it goes, Eah! It's kind of smoothness to it. So, I love it. And then there's so many variations. So those ones all sound very similar. But then there's one which was slightly different, had a slightly different texture. And I first heard it here. Here. And this is my favorite kind of like incarnation of it. That sound is so awesome, but what is going on there? It's, I can't understand. I cannot understand. It, it's, it's so clean, but it's also so dirty. Like it, it shouldn't have that much presence for a kind of clean sound. It's a, it's a weird juxtaposition of like smoothness and roughness. I can't even explain it, but that gets me. That gets me. It really fucks me up, that sound. I don't even know what he's playing there because it's so inharmonic. It's like he's going da 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 da. Like, I don't know if he's playing it or what part of that is the filter or the mod modulation. And there's a part later in the song, he pitches it down. It goes, it's, it has this growl sound. It sounds so dirty. Yeah, it's, I fucking found it right away. So this part. Mate, that, is, uh, that just gets me so hyped, that sound. In what, in what, that low growl. Listen to it. So dirty. There's just no coolest sound I've ever heard. And I've always wanted to get close to that. And then um, Love is Not a Game. And then he used it on various songs. So he, at the end of this song. Wah, wah. And I just, I simply cannot, I can't make something like that. And it's a, it's a, it's a sample. It's because I, I can I can hear by the way that it's moving and the rigidity of it. It's a sample. So I think the original sound was kind of higher up, and then when he sampled it and played it on a lower key, it gives it that kind of that uh, that presence. So I think I think you whatever it is, it's got to be working on like a slightly higher register, and then you sample it and you pitch it down. Uh, I just would love to make a sound even a little bit close to that. Um, I've gone really nerdy on this. I've gone really nerdy, but it's so my favorite song of all time is uh, features that, and it's if, for me, it's the apex of it. It's like the coolest drum sound I've ever heard, and it's the coolest synth sound I've ever heard. And I, this was my favorite song. So Andy C, biggest drum and bass DJ in the world. I mean, I've interviewed him a few times. I didn't know him, but 
you know, it's like say hello or whatever. And I'd follow him around and I'd watch him play on a Friday night and a Saturday night. And I remember one time I said like, it's really annoying when someone tells you what to play, but I knew his set so well. I think we had like a very small connection. I said, please play this song. And he just went like that and he pulled it out and played it. Like how many times will you say that to a DJ, especially the world's best and he'll, what a fucking geezer. And I remember he played this song and it, it fucked me up so hard. I remember when I used to take XC and hear this song, it used to fuck me. Like you'd hear the, the, the drums coming in and you, oh my God, is that, is it coming in? It's fucking coming in. And I'd know before other people because it was my favorite song. And I remember when it came in with the synth, I was so fucked up. I just got down on my knees and just put my hands on my head like this and like raked my face. I just was on the middle of the dance floor just doing this. It was, it was so fucking intense. This, and the thing is, no one knows this song. This song is periodic. No one knows what it is anymore. I just, for me, this is the greatest sonic achievement ever and you're going to listen to it and think like what it's so weird and minimalist and stripped down for me drum and bass there's no cooler drum sound i've ever heard than this and there's no kind of there's no cooler kind of funkier darker skulking like vibe than this song for whatever reason it's it's my favorite song of all time my favorite song ever This is when he was at his peak. He's like, he's like, you think I make music for money? You think I make music for fucking money? I make music because I love making fucking music. What's wrong with you? He said, that's the drum and bass spirit. It's, you don't do that shit for money. You do it because you love it. There's nothing fucking more real than that. Real. Sickest drum I've ever heard. I've got to start it again. And the, like, the way he's done that drum, so he can make really complex drums, but he stripped it down. And there's something, there's something about the, 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 the arrangement of that drum that just says, fuck you. It just says, fuck you. It says, I am the best. I'm the best at this. And I could give you some mad thing with loads of detail. I don't even need to. I'll give you this kind of stripped down, simple, but raw and nasty, minimalist beat. And it's just perfection. It's just perfection. There's something, I don't, I can't, I really, I'm not often lost for words, but this, how can I, how can I explain that drum loop? It, it's so sure of itself. It's so sure of itself. A, a, a more like amateur producer or someone who's desperate to please will put a superficial shit on it that's not necessary. That's a guy who knows exactly how it should sound. And he's just, he's just, he's giving you the hardest fucking thing possible. And ironically, the, the, the toughest, roughest beat possible isn't actually the most frenetic and detailed. It's just, it's this. It, it's this. Wait, wait. I fucking love this. It, it's the sickest drum loop I've ever heard. Ever. Out of like thousands of drum and bass songs. Nothing sounds like that. Fucking disgusting. Fucking. It's, it's the coolest thing I've ever heard. What is this? What is this? It's like the dirtiest nightmare ever, but it's so funky and it's it's so it, the the way that it feels, the way that it fucking feels. It's not just how it sounds. And then that synth is gone, like it doesn't come back. Like the arrangement is so fucking genius. He knows exactly what needs to come in, when it comes in, when it leaves. A total confidence in the execution. This, this on a fat sound system. Go, go, go. And just very subtle progression on the bass line, adding a bit of distortion on it. 
and there's not a sample out of place. There's a very subliminal, like, pink kind of samples in it. And then the, the bass goes lower on the sub. And that's all it is. That's this is yeah. This is my favorite song of all time. Any genre, like classical, electronic, rock, like anything. It's just my my song. Yeah, Deathcore Death Jedi making a lot of sense. Also mentioned that the good gate on it. Yeah, the gate is there is a gate. Now, Emo, this is before that plugin existed. This is from the desk I was talking about. This is from the desk. You can only get it from that desk. And then it comes back to this. And you have the kind of eerie inharmonic string. There's one note in the background, but with like a reverb and a kind of modulation on it, like a chorus. That is the coolest synth sound I've ever fucking heard. How did he make that? How did he make that? And I remember even Fabio played this. There's a DJ called Fabio who played really light stuff. Even he brought that shit in. And I met like... DJs will use that song, they'll re the, the, a track will smash it up, they'll wheel it, and then as it comes in again, they'll bring in this song and like, da -na 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 -na. they'll bring it in when the drums cut out and just have the synth, da -na 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 -na. pull the other track down, and then put the, the original song back in and then pull that one out. That's what she said. It's a great tool in the mix. And here's the thing, right? So I worked out how he got that drum sound and that mix is in repair. So I made a song and you can hear the similarity on the distortion. So all my life I was thinking there's, I mean, even before that producer had this desk, he could have any piece of equipment, it's gonna sound sick, but that desk, the limitations and the idiosyncrasies of that desk was in my opinion, so important to his sound around that time. And it all had that kind of shape and texture and like weight to it. And that was, I think I was proved right when I bought this, this weird desk that is so hard to get hold of, a piece of shit, no one wants it. No one knows that it's this, it's this like holy grail, this, this fucking dusty, crusty relic, holy grail desk. Even people who know it but don't know the genre say, why would you want that? Let me play you a song um, that I made on that desk. I just made it in like 10 minutes when I got it. Um, just just the, the hook of it, the main part. And um, you can tell me if you think there's any similarities. So... Oh well, man, where the fuck did I put it? Let's see, drum and bass. Ah, oh, fuck, don't lie. I don't know where I put the fucking thing. What is this? Oh, no, no, here we go. All right, I got this. Okay. So, listen to the crustiness of his drums on this. For example, um, what's the deal? The same album as that. This is called What's the Deal. This song is, is a fucking... What's the deal? What's up? So listen to the drums of this. This song, by the way, so sick it, like, on a heavy sound system. But listen to the crustiness of the drums. To hear the crustiness of the drums. He used drums like that on so many tracks. For example, this one, Human Bebop. So this, this is a, a track I made using that desk and live drums. See if you can hear the similarity.
You cannot tell me that's not the same sound. You cannot tell me. And it only comes from that desk. It only comes from that desk. That guy is my favorite producer of all time. No one likes that guy's music more than I do. Nobody does. Like, I've been there since the beginning as that guy's fan. I know what his sound is. And when I got that desk and I put the drums through it, it sounded very similar. So I really can't wait to get that desk back. Um, I just thought it a bit too much, but it's just that desk. And here's a weird story. So when that desk got sent over, the guy who mailed it to me put it in this very thin cardboard box about that fucking thin, like a barbecue. It was a barbecue box, a box for a barbecue. And it was all mashed up, the mixing desk, which is why it's in repair. And the channels one and two got damaged, but it was circuit bent in the coolest way. So when I put the sound into channels one and two, this is what happened. So I told the engineer who's fixing it, I said, do not touch channels one and two because it was damaged in transit. All the rack ears were bent and stuff. But uh, this is what happened to it. Ema, no, no one can replicate that. So maybe I'm, I love the producer so much I listen to it on a level other people don't. But, but there's no, there's basically that guy is the drum and bass producer of all time. Goldie, like the face of drum and bass, says he's the best producer ever. And I've interviewed, I've interviewed all of them. I've interviewed Andy C, Mampy Swift, uh, Friction. I've interviewed Pendulum. I've interviewed DJ Fresh. I've interviewed Bad Company. I've interviewed every single one of those people. DJ Hype. I've, I've been in their studios. I've seen how they make music and all of them have files saying Dillinger bass this, Dillinger drums. And no one has even come, like not even, not even halfway to getting close to that sound. So in my opinion, you, you simply cannot replicate it without that desk. It's the only thing that's, that's going to make it like that for some reason, for some reason. But of course, you, of course, you can get something sounding pretty ballpark, but maybe I just listen to it on an obsessive level. But anyway, so... Yeah, um, that's my favorite sound of all time. And I, I really, Ema, if you can make that sound, I'll be well happy, bruv. If you can make that sound, that Ewa, Ewa, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man, I really want something like that. There was a Breaks producer. He played something and it sounded kind of similar. Um, he said that was on, um, what's that famous software synth? So I'm not reading your comments out. Chris Cowan says, Johnny, search for David Fingers Haynes, Afro-Cuban finger drumming on YouTube. You can make your own loops. That sounds like a good place to sample from. Hmm. Oh, my favorite song is called Street Dancer by Avicii. That's actually a tune. I thought Avicii is kind of cheesy. So when he died, I thought, what, what, why is everyone going mad about Avicii? But... That tune, yeah, is actually really good street dancer. That's taken from a video game, right? That's taken from a video game. Death Jello says, based off the OG pirate radio off the, off the coast of the UK, let's face it, UK was the original underground music using offshore broadcast to pirate in tunes nobody heard. Yeah, man. Yeah, now it's all just like instantly released on streaming. There's no like monoculture. It doesn't grow. That You don't have that underground culture. How can we make something underground again? Because... If someone can find a way to do that, it would be so lucrative and popular and niche in its own way because everyone likes exclusivity. Exclusivity equals demand. So how can you make something underground now? I don't think it can be when everything, everyone has a camera phone and shares stuff online or whatever. PH Joy says, talk nerdy to me, Johnny Masker. We could get really nerdy if you want. PH Joy liked my favorite song, which I like. Deathcore says, this is a pure form of drum and bass. It sounds good. You don't need more than a clack and boom and a good rhythm that makes you want to bob your head. Even if you can't dance, that's it. That's it. That guy had the clack and the boom. That's for show. Sure. That's for show. Sure. Um, my lifetime friend, Ken, who's DJ Fergie's big brother, says emo. Andy C is his hero since he began. Yeah, I've had many kitchen yams in the early hours with these things. Also, CJ McIntosh, take a note of 
Ahi channel Johnny on YouTube. He shows tutorials for making them bases. The thing is, yeah, like we're, we're, I never ever watch tutorials. I don't. I sometimes do, but I don't like watching tutorials. I don't like plugins. I don't like knowing what the new plugins are. Um, I don't like software instruments. I don't like knowing what the trends are um, because I, I think people, of course, there are some plugins which are so powerful nowadays. It's good to know about them. However, the best songs I've ever heard were made on a piece of shit Atari or some fucking like hardware sampler with limited channels and all kinds of fucked up logistics. So I know that I, I don't want to get bogged down in that. And I, I, I hate being part of the trend and part of the circles. Like everyone's using this. And I'd rather, even if there's something to my benefit, having the added headspace of just of, of um, just purely focusing on the music for me is more of a net positive than finding out about all these new things. So I stay away from it. I've been, I've been slaving away in the music industry for uh, 24 years. So I just, I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy that side of it. I don't enjoy the new plugins. I don't enjoy the new releases. I don't enjoy, you know, tutorials or any of that stuff. I just like to kind of stay in my own little bubble. That's how I seem to function best creatively. But, but I don't want to be too intransigent. You know, I do listen, I do read and I do like when people send me links and stuff, I will look at it um, when I have the time. So yeah, I, I should try to find a balance really, but I don't really get, I don't spend a lot of time looking what other people are doing. I can't, I can't on anything really. YouTube as well. See, there's this other YouTuber out here. Um, he's really big and um, um, Vivid actually recommended me to him, recommended him to me. And I looked at him a bit, but it just gets into my headspace. Like, what are they doing? How are they doing it? I just, I just, I just want to do, do it my way um, for better or worse. And that YouTuber someone recommended, apparently he made a Blade Runner kitchen in Japan. I thought this motherfucker is copying my style and he's doing much better. So all of that goes into my head when I start looking at what other people are doing and I just like to stay away from it. I just wish I could get the, that golden era of drum and bass will never be repeated. That for motivation was amazing, but, but still. Ema says, I said, fuck tutorials, but then I caught on, you learn something. Now, I mean, you do have a point. There, there are some tutorials which are so valuable um, on drum and bass. Um, pendulum has one it's not really a tutorial but there's a long pendulum one where he's in the street it's like three or four hours long not the future music one there's one by um, Metric so he's like the kind of new, nouveau drum and bass producer and he just breaks it down like how to make his own drums he just creates them all on the synthesizer and he'll have three layers one is like it's literally like it sounds like a metronome like a not even that it's like a very small uh, very small click just for the initial transient and then he'll have like just white noise. It's sometimes without an attack, it's just like whoosh, it comes in. Then he'll have the boof, the kind of beefy. So all together, you get the click, you get the beef, and you get the white noise, and it goes like, like this. Those those two tours are really good. Um, so yeah, you, I mean, yeah, definitely should at some point. Jim Morrison's brother says, who's the guy with the Blade Runner kitchen in Japan? So this guy has a really big following. He's a Brit, and he made his wall like purposefully dirty. He has a neon sign. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. Um, Let's see, so like Japan, Brit, YouTuber, Blade Runner Kitchen. Um, yeah, where is, like, who is this guy again? Back to the Future Partners better than Blade Runner Kitchen. Thank you, thank you. No, I'm sure, I'm sure he's, he's a good guy. Uh, he's called Chris Broad. So this is a guy Vivid recommended to me. Chris Broad's Blade Runner Fancy comes to life. Um, so they, he did a podcast. Um, but there's no, there's no visuals here. So, that, so Chris Broad has been making videos on YouTube for 10 years, publishing them on his channel abroad in Japan. Uh, 2.5 million subscribers. So this guy's massive. Um, Chris Broad. Um, kitchen. So it's a studio in Sendai, a studio, studio in Sendai. Let, let's have a look, we'll see what this looks like. So, okay, so th this is the guy. Um, <laughs> the thing is, it's not, it's not really like, if it's, if it's Harrison Ford's kitchen, but it's not supposed to be, especially Blade Runner Influence. So he's gone for the kind of weathering on the wall and he has a neon sign there. Isn't this weird? It's like this guy, he's a bit older than me, I think, but similar generation, like British guy, come to Japan, likes Blade Runner. It's not just me. <laughs> There's other people who've done it and done it much more successfully. 
in an aging office block on Sendai, there's a dusty ramen shop. Oh, so it's a ramen shop. So he actually started a ramen shop. So man, no, I should, we should, I should link with this guy. It actually seems we probably get on um, if we can obsess over the Blade Runner together. That's a good starting point. Um, okay, so yeah, so I've never, I've never even watched it. Yeah, I just saw it and I was a bit jealous. I was like, man, this guy's doing really well. Like, I'm not even close to this guy. So like, fuck that, like turn it off. But I, I've never even, I've never even watched it. I don't even know what it's about. But Jim Morrison's bathtub likes it. So that's good enough for me. Um, just so you know, you can donate https colon forward slash forward slash dreamlabs.com forward slash uh, Johnny Massacre if you want. Um, Griffin Devon, okay, so Griffin Devon wants me to play this song. Let's do it. Sorry, Griffin Devon. Um, okay. Crazy, crazy, what's it called? Crazy Bitch by Buck Cherry. There it is. Mate, my spot of... So, oh, here we go. Right. Oh, shit. Quite like this. Heavy. Break me down. You got a lovely face. You got a lovely got face, lovely darling. Face. And now you got to freak me out. Scream so loud. Getting fucking late. This is very American. This is like American uplifting. Fun. I got to make my way. Hey, y'all crazy bitch, but you fuck so good I'm on top of it when I I'm doing you. This is like kind of like American rock punk pop. Y'all crazy bitch, but you fuck so good I'm on top of it when This is quite good. I could imagine getting fucked up to this. Do something stupid. It's kind of any good song. He's younger than me. I mean, he looks about 44. Take it all. The paper is your game. You jump in bed with fame. Another one not paid in fall. Uh, I, liked, I like the song on Spotify. Cashing in the rocks. Just to get you face to face. Hey, y'all crazy bitch, but you fuck so good I'm on top. I love Americans. Like your culture is is weirdly crude. There's some parts of it which you feel so unrefined and and a little bit I don't know lacking in in yeah they're just unrefined and it's a bit crude but it's lovable. Like it's lovable in that way. It's lovable. Like I saw someone on Fox News. He was talking about um, you know like on America someone tried to eat as many hot dogs as possible and that's what it's all about and. On Independence Day, and I was like, "What?" But it's 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 weirdly endearing. <laughs> Crazy bitch. Yeah, I should sing this in karaoke. Bitch. Crazy bitch. Hey. You're so crazy, you're so crazy, man. When I dream, I'm doing you all night. Sketches all down my back to keep my right on. Hey, y'all crazy bitch, but you fuck so good. I'm on top of it when I dream. I'm doing you all night. Sketches all down my back. Come on, baby girl. Bridge, take it to the bridge. To be a star, you have to go down. Cool, cool. Thanks for the recommendation, Griffin. Thank you for that. So there you go. I could I could nerd out on this one. I just nerded out. I had no plan for this cheeky live stream, but I nerded out. At least I could play my favorite song ever. I love that. So now it's 1 p.m. and fuck, man. I, I've got to edit now the video. There's so many segments. I've got to edit Nancy Pelosi's tits. I've got to edit... <laughs> cheeky fat to Nancy. Once the camera goes off, um, Nancy plays his tit. I can't, Nancy's, Nancy's all right now. I mean, you can just destroy the whole world um, with your corrupt brand of politics as long as you get those tits out. Those 82 year old skeletal tits. Um, Nancy Pelosi tits and uh, the, the, what's the other thing? What's the other thing? What is the other thing? I don't know. I got. To, I got to edit today's show. So thank you, everybody. Um, the best competitive eaters from Japan. I'm not sure, but we do have a few out here. 
Um, yeah, we the people. Chris Campbell recommends. Chris Campbell. Um, yeah, that I, I covered that before. I got quite a lot of views for a video I did about we the people. So, the slutty girl is saying, "I'm waiting for explanation of me ghosting." It's just weird, right? Like if I, I haven't even met you and we're talking about all kinds of freaky shit, then when it comes to the crunch, it feels like, am I really going to go and like commit to some filthy sex with someone I've never met who actually could be like a real turn off? There could be something like could smell. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, Jim Morrison's boss says, you're going to wank yourself to Nancy Pelosi and you admit it. Hey, I mean, look, it's, if it's wrong, <laughs> if it's wrong, it's eternal, right? And there's nothing more wrong than wanking to Nancy. Nancy skelet skeletits. So yeah. I need to I need to edit. I need to edit this this video. But I do want to get some time in the studio. Thank you everybody. It's been fun. It's been fun. I have been Johnny Mask and I tell you what, mates, you better be back for the next cheeky live stream. Otherwise I'll be coming around your house. Please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because well, that is what all those other cunts tell you to do.